If you say that this needs to happen in society, what are you doing inside your own four walls? Hello, and welcome to Velocitize Talks. I'm Andy North, and today my guest is Sandy Skies, Global Lead for the Purpose and Impact Practice at Porta Novelli. Sandy, thank you so much for being here. Good to be here. You have an incredible background, a very broad and varied background, strategic communications, PR, and marketing uh, around issues, including climate, stra climate strategy, equity, carbon and GHG emissions, and, and so many more. Uh, and now you lead Porta Novelli's purpose and impact practice. Tell us a little bit about that practice, your role in it, and what sets it apart in the marketplace. So I think the thing that makes our practice different is what makes my career different, which is a career that is in both communications narrative, brand development, and I'm a sustainability practitioner, which means that I've been advising clients for about the last 15 years on setting climate goals, diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice goals, uh, programmatic strategy, programmatic implementation. And what I found and the reason why I'm building the Purpose and Impact Group at Porto Novelli is that technical skills associated with developing uh, strategy and programmatic approaches won't be deployed successfully without smart communications. Because what we're really talking about, if it comes to, when it comes to climate change and uh, a fair society, is we're talking about behavior change, which starts with changing minds and hearts and then behaviors. And what I've learned is that if we're going to meet the challenges of our times, these kinds of um, uh, programs and approaches and strategies that need to be deployed need smart and compelling communications. One of the topics that you speak about uh, lately is deconstructing gender in products and marketing, which I find fascinating. Uh, talk a little bit about that uh, and perhaps discuss your work on how to rethink gender when, in, when looking at products, marketing, and, and even influencers. I think there's two things simultaneously that are happening. Society is looking at gender in, the, in a non-binary way. Science also understands that gender is actually not binary. There isn't just this hard, there are men and then there are women, there's male and female. In fact, biologically, there's a lot of fluidity between those two ends of the spectrum. And so what we're seeing is companies responding to employees who want to express themselves across a gender spectrum. And we're watching uh, uh, customers actually look for products that are not gendered. In fact, we just uh, will be issuing some release, uh, research that we fielded about a month ago, which is a repeat of research we did a year ago, looking for what are consumers' expectations of companies in their marketing and in their products. And we've seen an increase uh, from about 63% to 68%. People want companies to stop gendering things and essentially think about it. This is why are razors pink for women and black for men? Why is uh, why are Siri and Alexa female voices and the robots who you know uh, break things and protect things are men? Like we just there's this gendering happening that creates these subliminal gender roles. And what consumers are saying is stop advertising to me in that way and stop putting products in front of me. I think 63% of people said they went looking for ungendered products for gifts and for themselves, and they had a hard time finding it. Given that shifting paradigm, how can marketers adapt in ways that are, that are meaningful and genuine and authentic? Ask yourself if, if a gender, a binary gender categorization of your potential reader, viewer, customer is actually a first decision tree that you want to go down. We have a, a, a eyewear company that we've worked with that that was the first question that designers asked themselves. Um, are we designing a pair of eyewear for men or women? And the actual uh, question they, they are now asking themselves is what shape, what face shape are we designing for? Because We've seen eyewear and other fashion. Fashion's ahead of us on this, and you're starting to see more and more apparel that is more fluid in its, uh, who it's designed for. And you're starting to design less for men and women and more for curvy shapes or angular shapes or tall or short. That's just a question we as marketers and specifically as communicators want to ask ourselves if we're using gender as a I don't want to call it lazy, but just 
Let's question the assumptions we have about the characteristics we assume a gender is going to give us in a customer or a reader or a viewer. I want to take it uh, from a technology standpoint now, and with all of these changes and opportunities on the horizons, how can marketers leverage existing and future technologies and digital platforms to advance their brand intentions and goals related to uh, purpose and sustainability? The gender lens is, is one area that we work in. Certainly climate is another. Um, if you take a step back and look at the role of business, um, all stakeholders are expecting businesses to do better, to, to be a better business. And that means working on initiatives that um, restore our, the sort of health of our planet and ensure that our society's fabric, the fabric of our society is, is stable and steady and, and true. So, you know, that's where the climate work and the diversity work show up. Um, people get their information from digital platforms. I, I like to tell clients that when you're putting together your communication strategy for your purpose work or your sustainability and, and JEDI, Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion programs, think about your owned, earned, and paid channels. And most people forget their owned channels, which is not just their website. Now, first of all, make sure that all of the information you want to communicate about your sustainability progress, your climate progress, your diversity progress um, isn't only included in the PDF of your sustainability report, but that it's findable one or two clicks away. But your owned platform is a robust place to put a lot of evergreen content, and then you can update it annually with progress you're making against your commitments, which is a report. The reports we're finding are becoming smaller because most of the evergreen uh, you know, commitments, vision, policies, governance, all of that is exists forever on the web page. Second thing is don't forget the other places that you own that you can put messaging. And this is where your customers are looking. So that's not just your social channels, but it's also in store, on pack, on labels, little bits of information that you can put there about how products are made, who makes them, where the materials are sourced for, from, what kind of progress your company is making. Those all belong on the myriad of owned channels you have to place messaging. And the last thing I'll say is your stakeholders, your customers are looking for this information. And it used to be you could you could issue information about sustainability, climate and um, diversity on an annual basis. Because your stakeholders are looking for it everywhere all the time, you now need a communications plan that uh, has a steady drumbeat of the progress you're making, the anecdotal stories that demonstrate and illustrate the progress you're making or the kind of creativity and innovation you're bringing to these problems. It needs to happen on an ongoing basis, should be part of your um, corporate communication strategy, should be part of your marketing strategy. Have you seen brands coming across falsely or perhaps trying to gender wash, if you will, or environment wash uh, to meet Gen Z where they live? And if so, do you, do you think Gen Z is seeing through it? Well, I think Gen Z and all active stakeholders um, are going to look for information on your website, on your product, on your packaging. And they're going to go look for the information. And, uh, and research shows that you can't predict what, what, which of your programs or issues your individual customers may care the most about. Some people are going and their whole thing is, uh, you know, uh, animal testing. For someone else, it might be, I want to know that you're using renewable energy. You can't predict, so you've got to talk about all of it. And they're going to dig and look for it. And our research, as we've looked at uh, consumers' attitudes around companies and climate, our research says that the Gen Z in particular they're going to look at your commitments, then they're going to go find evidence that you've met them. Um, I would say that after George Floyd's murder in the uh, wake of all of the racial awareness that we've seen, there was a lot of performative actions, which is, I think, essentially what you're talking about, that inauthentic um, communications that says, you know, we support Black Lives Matter or whatever, then you lift it up the hood of the company and you find their board isn't diverse, their executive team isn't diverse, uh, they don't have any smart policies in place for LGBTQ employees, et cetera. So that, that's what I always call the say-do gap. Uh, you got to be careful that you're 
your say doesn't get a hold of your do, uh, and that and that the first thing anyone's going to look for is if you say that this needs to happen in society, what are you doing inside your own four walls to ensure that you're breaking down the systems of of uh, discrimination that are inside your own company, et cetera. A couple of questions we like to ask all our guests. Uh, one is, what's the best professional advice that you've either heard or been given? The best advice, career advice I've ever been given uh, was a, a a woman who owned her own firm told me, always uh, say yes to the meeting. You're never going to know who might call you and ask for a conversation or a meeting. And I always say yes when, when people reach out um, because I learn something when I talk to young uh, people new to their profession. Um, I learn something when I talk to people who are trying to tell me about their company or their product or service. Um, it's a way of me just, you're constantly learning. So, so say yes to the meeting request. You just never know the colleague that you'll make will be a friend for life. And it's easy to remember, say yes to the request. I love that. Uh, is there a book, a blog, or a podcast that uh, you're fond of that you'd like to share with our viewers? I'm going to go back to that gender uh, discussion we had earlier. I encourage everyone to subscribe to them.us, uh, them.us. Um, it's a wonderful uh, organization that puts out a website information all about the, the fluid gender uh, spectrum. And uh, if you want to uh, become more attuned and... Um, aware of what's happening in the LGBTQ and the gender fluid space, uh, subscribe to that. My guest today has been Sandy Skies, global lead for the purpose and impact practice at Porter Novelli. Sandy, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for the time. My pleasure. Really appreciate being able to chat with you, Andy.